Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Eno Gorongwana has delivered his maiden budget speech amid something of a revenue tailwind but rising spending pressures. Terence Creamer joins me to unpack the highlights. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. What was the overarching theme of this year's budget? Well, I think your intro captured it in the sense that it was really this revenue tailwind of 182 billion rand, which has given quite a lot of breathing space for the, the finance minister in his maiden budget to both cut back uh, on the deficit as well as increase some spending on social relief. So I think that, that really, in some ways, it, it makes the budget look a lot more impressive than many would have thought it would be, given the context of the pandemic, uh, the contraction in the economy sharply last year, then we had those terrible July riots. But uh, it really has helped clean up the figures quite materially. So we can see a narrowing of the deficit and moving to a, a sort of a, a budget balance in the next few years that's going to be much more uh, favourable uh, for South Africa. And then being able to do this in a, without having to announce any tax increases whatsoever on personal income tax, corporate tax actually gets reduced by a percentage point. Um, and, uh, you know, VAT has also not increased and there's been a hold on any fuel level, levy. So the only real new tax that comes through relates to the carbon tax, the carbon tax on, on certain fuel products, uh, diesel and petrol as well as, as the carbon tax starts ramping up now, although the, there's huge amounts of allowances still uh, surrounding that carbon tax that gives a lot of sort of uh, uh, breathing space. I think the main theme was that uh, things are starting to turn around fiscally. The fiscal sustainability of South Africa looked very precarious a few years ago and was go all the indicators were going in the wrong direction. Now the indicators, the main indicators, uh, still very, very high levels of debt. Debt is a huge item of expenditure. Debt repayment now, uh, sort of second biggest item of expenditure, uh, really is very, very large and something that we still need to get under control. But at least uh, with this uh, revenue tailwind, which is really all about the commodity, uh, buoyant commodity markets, which is allowed for massive corporate tax revenues that weren't expected, and we've seen on the private sector side massive dividend payments from some of these companies. So that's really the that's given us, or given the finance minister, a lot of breathing space. What did the finance minister decide to do with the extra revenue collections? Yes, uh, I think uh, there was a lot of focus ahead of the budget around the basic income grant and whether that was going to be made permanent. But uh, really, what the finance minister has done is just kick that can down the road in the sense of this, he's kept about 45 billion rands worth of that 182 billion extra uh, revenue, the windfall, and sent, directed it the way of sustaining the 350 rand a month social relief grant. So that's a big uh, ticket item within what's going to be, what that money is going to be used for. There's also going to be money for the, the, the president's very strong on these employment schemes, and he announced that in the State of the Nation that those would be sustained. And uh, over the three-year horizon, about 18 billion is going to be directed towards those employment schemes. And we, I suppose that's an important uh, signal because you know, the unemployment rate is really very high. These are already job opportunities, not permanent jobs. As we also know from the state of the nation, there's a focus on getting the private sector moving again to try and create the real jobs, the permanent jobs. But this is a re relief. So there's relief there, there's relief for high education students as well. And then they've also been able to use a, a fair share of it to cut back on uh, um, the deficit. And they've now got a bit of a framework where they can actually raise lower borrowings in the next three years than would have been the case, case quite substantially so. And uh, it's not just uh, last, uh, the current year's uh, revenue that's been adjusted upwards, but even going forward, there's a, there's a upward adjustment or revision to the revenue outlook. So that has been, that has helped a lot. And yes, that's really where the money's gone. Those sort of, on the one hand, social relief, um, and on the other hand, uh, to uh, cut back on some of the borrowings. 
Are there any tax shocks? I suppose the, the real tax shocks, shock is that there's no tax shock at all. You know, in the run-up to the budget with the focus on the basic income grant and really knowing that you've got this revenue windfall, but also knowing that this revenue windfall is not necessarily permanent because it's very much linked to the commodity cycle. There was a real hard push to try and make some of this, uh, especially the social relief for distress, the COVID grant, more permanent and expanded. And that has been resisted uh, uh, by the finance minister at this stage. Uh, so um, that, that, that could have led to something of a tax shock, especially around VAT. But instead, what we've seen is some tax relief, uh, higher, uh, higher brackets, which is also some relief, um, you know, as well as a lower corporate income tax and no new sign of any new taxes other than those carbon taxes. So uh, a happy shock, if it's a shock at all, uh, but not, not necessarily a permanent one. Is there any update on the reform agenda? I think that's where South Africa remains quite weak. We've had this reform agenda already under the aegis of the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan now knocking around, and implementation has been quite patchy. Uh, obviously, a big part of that is electricity reform, and we have seen some significant steps in recent times around that, especially the lifting of the uh, embedded generation cap from one to one megawatt to 100 megawatts, and we're starting to see a project pipeline now developing around that from the private sector, taking up that opportunity. Uh, but there's still some way to go to really close the gap that we have seen emerging. Uh, we also seen major restructuring of the electricity supply industry underway, and it's uh, elated and much needed the unbundling of the transmission company from Eskom. So there is some patchy reform and progress, we've, but we've seen major delays around the spectrum release. Hopefully there'll be some progress there. The infrastructure program really hasn't kicked off as it should have. Um, and there's a lot of promise in this year's budget around that. Uh, but we really need that uh, reform to be firing on all cylinders to start creating the climate for investment, private investment. And that's the only real lever that we're going to get our, our growth rate to a different level. Our potential growth is very low. We're talking about 2% this year and then sort of slacking back to about a 1.8% growth rate or run rate over the next three years, which is really not good enough given the current high unemployment rate in so, and our many, many social needs. And we know that these things like basic income grants and uh, these other spending pressures, we know the wage, uh, the wage pressures are going to come from the public sector with negotiations starting this year again for the next round of public sector wage talks. And th those are not baked into this budget. It's not assuming any big rises in, in wages. And uh, there is going to be a big summit between Labour and government in March to try and look at if they can restructure the whole wage scene. But if we don't get this reform agenda really at a different level and firing on all cylinders, the, the, the investment that we need in this economy from the private sector to create the jobs and create the, the revenue, the future revenue streams for social protection are just not going to be there. So I think that's while we've got some relief from this commodity boom and uh, this extra revenue and breathing space, that breathing space is not permanent. And we need to, the, the thing that's going to make it permanent is far higher levels of investment by the private sector. And that's only going to come if there's confidence and breathing confidence into this economy requires movement on this reform agenda and urgently so. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.